The late model MiG-9 flies for the Soviet Union and for China in War Thunder. Let's check it out. At the end of World War II, Soviet military planners came to two main conclusions about their aviation needs. First, jet power was the future. Second, the Allied strategic bombing campaign was instrumental in bringing the Third Reich to its knees, and they needed new fighters capable of handling the next generation of bombers. To this end, a new requirement was set for a fighter powered by a pair of surplus German jet engines, which were in the process of being copied, and equipped with a trio of heavy cannons. The MiG Bureau's design, the I-300, was a very conventional aircraft for its day and drew heavily on experience with piston engine fighters. According to urban legend, the MiG and Yak bureaus used a coin flip to decide which Soviet jet would be the first to fly, and the I-300 won, making its first flight in April of 1946. The new plane had a lot of issues, but they were all generally considered solvable, and the highest priority was simply to get a viable jet interceptor into service as fast as possible, so development was approved as the MiG-9. As a military fighter, the MiG-9 was a fundamentally flawed design. There were constant problems with engine reliability, thermal issues, and exhaust gas from the cannons had a bad habit of feeding into the engines and choking the combustion process. Despite all kinds of clever ideas, that particular problem was never fully resolved. A lot of smaller improvements were incorporated into the production line without assigning new model numbers to the plane, including upgraded wheel brakes, rearranged fuel tanks combined with wingtip tanks, a set of air brakes on the wings, an upgraded radio, and slight changes to the tail. However, by the time the MiG-9 actually started arriving in operational squadrons, the MiG-15 was already well under development, so its days were numbered right from the start. The MiG-9 also flew for China, where it had an equally short service life being phased out in the early 1950s. What we're looking at in War Thunder is the MiG-9 Late, which is available in the Soviet and Chinese air trees in rank 5 with a battle rating of 7.3, although most of this review also applies to the regular model MiG-9 as well. Being an early gunslinger jet, the MiG-9 doesn't have any kind of ballistics computer or combat system, nor does it have any external weapon loadouts. It does have a trio of very high caliber cannons, one 37mm N37D, mounted right in the center of the nose, with 40 rounds of ammo, and two more 23mm NS23K cannons mounted down under the chin with 80 rounds of ammo. You get a mismatched selection of ammo belts for the different size cannons, and this is where some tough choices kick in. Generally speaking, the air target's belt tends to be the best option, but some players swear by using the armored target or stealth belt on the 23mm guns, along with the air target belt on the 37. In my experience, though, using both air target belts tends to land more critical hits, and it even works pretty well against most ground targets. Regardless of the ammo belts, though, this combined weapon system ends up being kind of difficult to use effectively, since both cannons have completely different ballistics trajectories. And if you want to take your MiG-9 gameplay to the next level, you might want to think about spending some time playing around with vertical targeting and or your switch primary weapon keybind. The flight performance of the MiG-9 has some pros and cons, but more cons than pros. The plane has two engines, and it can limp along with just one, but even when both are in good shape, it's a bit underpowered, with barely average acceleration and top speed for this BR. Its rate of climb is, again, not great, but if you take a minimum fuel load, it's generally able to climb as well as comparable planes. At altitude, it tops out just over 950 kilometers an hour, which puts its top speed a little above some of its competition, but also below quite a few planes that it goes up against. Now, the MiG-9 doesn't get any kind of combat flaps or air brakes, even though the late model planes did have air brakes. 
So speed management has to be done entirely with throttle controls and flight maneuvers. The silver lining, though, is that the MiG-9 actually has a surprisingly high rip speed for a subsonic jet like this, and it won't fall apart until you push past 1,000 kilometers an hour. It's also pretty hard to over-G the wings or anything, and in all my time flying this plane, I've never had any kind of wing rip or structural problems. The overall maneuverability and dogfighting agility of the MiG-9 is below average. Its turn rate isn't as good as some of the other entry-level jets, it gets energy trapped pretty easily in vertical maneuvers, and it dumps speed badly in sustained turns. Plus, if you're diving in on someone, the controls lock up really bad at high speeds. Generally speaking, if you get pulled into a traditional dogfight, your air combat maneuvering will need to be almost perfect if you want to survive, and the MiG-9 ends up being one of the least maneuverable entry-level jet fighters. Taking the late model MiG-9 out into air battles is more about managing limitations than exploiting advantages. I want to say up front that most of the mission footage in this review was chosen to try and just show a variety of different flight situations rather than just repeating ideal tactics over and over. Mostly this was because the best way to use this plane is with high energy vulture tactics using slow paced attack passes. And frankly, it's not that interesting to watch, and if you see it once, you really don't need to see it a second time. The reason I say it's the best way to use this plane is that if you get sucked into medium speed turn fighting, you're very quickly going to end up stuck in defensive maneuvers most of the time, and if you get somebody on your six, it's probably just a matter of time before they get a lucky shot off that crits a control line or something and you eventually go down. This is one of those planes where positioning tactics end up mattering a lot more than air combat maneuvering tactics, and frankly, its cannon's weird ballistics makes this plane pretty rough to score hits with in a conventional dogfight with deflection shots and stuff. Plus, sometimes your hits are just going to one-pop the target, and other times you'll get nothing but glancing hits that don't seem to do any damage. In addition to all this, the MiG-9 doesn't get a lot of ammo and you need serious fire discipline to avoid running out. Overall, it's really difficult to use, has almost no capability for defensive flying, and you're going to need a lot of practice on the cannons if you want to get good with this plane. In terms of ground attack, the bad news is that the MiG-9 doesn't get any bombs or rockets. The good news is that its cannons actually hit pretty hard on ground targets. The air target's belt can pop light pillboxes and medium tanks with a few direct hits, and the armored target's belt can sometimes get medium tanks in one hit. It's easy to overlook the potential of a plane like this for ground attack, but it ends up being better than you might expect, just remember the low ammo count. Visually, the MiG-9 is... kinda weird. It's very obviously a jet fighter that was designed like a prop fighter, and those cannons sticking out from the nose are very unique. None of the MiG-9s in the game, early or late model, get any interesting paint jobs, but the default ones aren't too bad at least. Landing the MiG-9 isn't too bad, but you're going to want to practice once or twice. You can drop the gear at around 370 kilometers an hour, but the landing flaps will rip off above 300, so you gotta wait before throwing those down. You also want to remember on final that the engines have a very slow response time to throttle movements, and the plane doesn't have a drag chute or anything, so your landing runs are going to be pretty long, and a lot of times you may be landing with a pretty high throttle setting. The cockpit gives amazing all-around visibility, including a basically unobstructed view backwards which is amazing. However, this is a very old cockpit model. The instruments are all drawn on instead of modeled, and the front bracing above the gun sight ends up really getting in the way, and it makes it incredibly difficult to see targets. I enjoyed flying this jet in VR in terms of pilotage, but I had a really hard time using it for combat. To close out on the late model MiG-9. This jet has three high caliber cannons, its engines don't overheat as bad as some other early jets, 
and it can take a lot of damage, even surviving belly landings pretty easily. However, the ammo is very limited, the cannons can be hard to aim, it's not a great dogfighter, and it doesn't have any external weapons. The final verdict on the MiG-9 is that this jet is usually either loved or hated, with a very narrow playstyle in order to be effective. In my opinion, it's more of a stepping stone to the MiG-15 as opposed to being a primary fighter. As always, thanks for watching.